In the past, we've made videos discussing new ways to bring movies and TV shows into your home theater, and one of our favorite ways of doing that is with in-home streaming, and usually this would involve buying an expensive NAS along with a streaming device in order to broadcast your content across the network. But in today's video, we're going to be looking at a lower cost alternative to setting up a regular NAS as well as a replacement for most streaming devices like the Nvidia Shield or Apple TV, and that's this tiny little single board computer called the Zima board. So if you want to see why this is one of our new favorite home theater devices, then stick around. I'll get into it right after the intro. All right, so with that out of the way, I think I need to start by explaining what exactly the Zima board is. The model that we have here is the Zima board 862, and this is basically just a really small computer that you can use as anything from a server or a media streamer to even a system for emulating old video games. The specific board we have here comes with a Celeron N3450 processor paired with eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and 32 gigs of built-in storage, which will set you back just about $200. But they also have other models with less RAM and storage depending on your needs. Taking a closer look at the Zima board itself, the first thing that you'll notice here is this very nice all aluminum heatsink on the top, which is used to protect and passively cool the quad core processor inside, meaning that the Zima board is actually completely silent. On the front, you get a power jack, dual gigabit ethernet ports, along with a pair of USB 3 connectors, and to top that all off, a mini display port jack for connecting up to a display. This connector can transmit full 4K at 60 Hz with 444 chroma subsampling. So if you use an adapter cable like this one, it's basically just a standard HDMI 2.0 capable connection. The rest of the connectors are what makes the Zima board such an interesting option for home theater use though. On the side, you'll get the small PCI Express 4X slot for connecting completely regular computer PCIe cards. And on the back, you'll get two SATA ports for adding standard SATA hard drives and SSDs. And to me, these are really cool because unlike most mini PCs, which might only limit you to a single storage device, you can add two drives to the Zima board just by using this little cable that's available for purchase on their website for three bucks. And if you need more, you can use the PCIe slot on the side to connect something like a five port SATA card or even a multiple NVMe SSDs using expansions that they sell on their website. Aside from the expansion, the Zima board also needs a power adapter, and we just ended up using the 36 watt one that you can buy from the Zima board store page. This is an international adapter, and it comes with a few different plugs, so you can use it pretty much anywhere. And since the Zima board is just a computer, it actually comes from the factory with a lightweight version of Linux called Casa OS, which is based on Debian Linux. We didn't use this for our testing though, and instead just went ahead and installed a regular copy of Windows 10, because we figured that's what most people might be using for home theater. At this point, you can pretty much do anything with the Zima board that you might do with a regular server or a regular computer for that matter. So we figured that for our first test, we should go ahead and see how well it can stream media over the network using Plex. So at this point, we basically set it up like any other streaming box, plugged it into the TV, gave it power and ethernet, and we also plugged in a wireless keyboard so we could control it from our couch. All you had to do then is install the Plex Home Theater app for Windows and log into our Plex account. And if you're following along at home, please keep in mind that you need the Plex Home Theater software and not the newer Plex app for Windows because the older software has proper hardware acceleration that actually lets movies play at a reasonable speed on this board. The newer software didn't run well for us at all. Overall, the Zima board did a really good job. The interface felt pretty snappy and all the movies that we tested played great over ethernet. So really you can think of this as a Nvidia Shield, like what we personally use for our home theater, but rather than running a locked down version of Android, you have a complete version of Windows 10 or whatever kind of variant of Linux you want to use. And that's the really, really big selling point of the Zima board. You can add anything you want to it, give it way more functionality than a regular streaming box. For example, if you want a 10 gigabit network interface for super fast access to your NAS, you can't really get that on any regular Nvidia Shield or Apple TV, but with the Zima board, all you have to do is add a card on the side. One thing we did notice about using the Zima board as a media streamer though, is that using a keyboard and mouse isn't all that convenient, but since you get the two USB ports, you can actually use something like this USB infrared receiver to take IR remote inputs from like your Logitech Harmony rope, for example, and control the board directly. 
This adapter was one of the ones that we could get quickly off Amazon, and I have to say we're actually really happy with it. With a proper remote control, this little board is basically the same as any other streaming box, but you can customize it however you want, and that's the really cool part. You don't even have to install Windows on it if you don't want to. There are plenty of free and open source operating systems that are made specifically for home theater, like take for example LibreELEC, which will give you a lightweight installation of Kodi, which is still one of the most popular home theater PC, Media Center softwares. And that's pretty much everything for the streaming side. We're really happy with the way that the Zima board performed in our setup, and in our opinion, it was just as capable as something like our Nvidia Shield. But on the flip side, there is a lot more setup involved, which might not be what you're going after. If you need Wi Fi or more storage, you're gonna need to spend more, and it's not gonna look like a nice little all in one system, but you have the ability to customize it way more than a regular streaming box. And I think that's a pretty good segue into our next test, which is going to be setting up the Zima board as a NAS for streaming movies to other devices in the house. So this was just a pretty simple matter of turning off the board so we could plug in a bigger SATA drive to store our movies on, turning it back on, and setting up Plex Media Server like you would on any other NAS running Windows. And again, we're still running Windows to do this, but you could pretty easily do the same thing on any version of Linux that you might want to install on the Zima board. But the point is, uh, with the Zima board set up as a Plex server, we could try doing this entire process in reverse, streaming to our NVIDIA Shield TV box. And this also worked perfectly. The Zima board has gigabit ethernet on board on both of its ports, so you have the bandwidth to stream pretty much anything with it. It's super easy to set up, barely draws any power, and overall we think the Zima board is a great solution if you want to replace something like a Raspberry Pi or NVIDIA Shield with a board that's much more powerful and customizable. If you have a use for a small and compact server board or home theater PC that can even do things like emulate old games or act as a hub for all of your smart home devices by using something like Home Assistant, the Zima board is also a really great product and we can highly recommend it. Well, with that said, I think that's just about it for this video. So I want to give a big thanks to Zima board for sending this over to us and letting us see what we can do with this little board. If you want to get your hands on one of these boards for yourself, we'll leave a link down in the description below where you can check out some of the different models, get expansion cards, accessories, and everything else so you can get started with the Zima board platform. And I just want to give you a big thanks for watching the video. If you thought it was interesting, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.